Hey everyone, so tonight I am going to show you how to decorate using colored slip and stencils. A colored slip is just a more liquid form of clay, so a watered down clay. Sometimes people call it slurry as well. And you can make a slip or a slurry with the clay body that you're using, or you can make colored slips using a ceramic stain and a clay body. Okay, here we go. So some things you're gonna need are newspaper, stencils, colored slip, brushes, scissors. So the first thing I like to do is cut the spine out of the newspaper so I don't have to deal with that crease and I can just get a really nice flat piece of newspaper. You're gonna need a stencil and you're gonna need some colored slips. You want your slip to be the consistency of pudding. If the slip is too thin, it's gonna sneak under the stencil and you're gonna get a very blurred image and we want a nice clean image. You want to take a wet sponge and you wanna just start to draw it over your newspaper to get your newspaper wet. You don't wanna get it so wet that you start to tear the newspaper, but you do wanna make sure the newspaper is wet all across the whole thing. Take your stencil. If you had a stencil like this one that had multiple images on it, you could certainly just do this one section if you're only interested in that one section. It's totally up to you. Or you can do the whole thing because you can also cut it out after we do this. So you're gonna want a brush that is a little bit wider. Load it up with the colored slip. And then you're gonna just start to brush over the design back and forth. The newspaper, the fact that the newspaper is wet helps the stencil stick down a little bit but you do also wanna make sure you're holding it down so it doesn't peel up. And you wanna go back and forth over those cutouts until the slip is thick enough that you cannot see the newspaper through the slip. You don't have to worry if you get the slip to the outside of the stencil, because once this slip stiffens up a little bit, we're gonna be able to cut away anything we don't want with the scissors. So you don't have to worry about being too neat, but you do wanna make sure you're getting a good coverage of slip to the point where you cannot see the newspaper. And in some instances, if the design is intricate enough, you probably won't even see the actual stencil in that area anymore. Once you are sure that you have gone over the whole design, just grab one corner and peel it up and it's gonna leave you a nice raised design. Now we can't use this right away because if I go to cut this out and stick it on my piece of clay, my clay form, it may squish and blur that image and we want a nice clean image so we have to set this aside. It's gonna take about 15 minutes for it to stiffen up. And that obviously is gonna depend on where you're at and how hot it is. If you're in a spot that has a lot of fans going, it might unevenly dry and dry more quickly. So if you have a stencil that has a pattern on it, you could draw a design on your newspaper first so then after the slip stiffens up, you can cut it out, or you certainly can just freeform and cut out with the scissors. But let's say you wanted some larger circles. These are pretty big circles, so we probably won't get a lot of them that fit within the stencil, but I could trace something. 
make sure you trace with a Sharpie or some sort of marker that's gonna make a dark enough mark that after you apply the slip, you can still see the outline of the design you created. And once again, I have to get the newspaper wet. So I just start pulling, usually from the center out, so you can seal the newspaper to the table to keep it nice and flat. The reason I get the newspaper wet is I found that if I don't get the newspaper wet first and I just lay the stencil down on the newspaper and apply the slip, a lot of the time when I'm peeling the stencil off, some of the slip will come up with the stencil and I don't get as clean of a print. So just adding some water to the newspaper seems to have alleviated that problem. So that is why I do it. And then, as I said previously, it also helps attach this stencil, kind of suction the stencil to the newspaper, which also helps you not get the slip underneath where you don't want it. So once again, I'm gonna take a different colored slip. You wanna make sure you mix your slip to make sure it's really uniform. If it was sitting around, the water is gonna to come to the top and the heavy clay particles are gonna to settle to the bottom. So make sure you mix it really well so it's nice and uniform. Load up your brush and here we go. Load enough slip into the design that you cannot see the newspaper. So because we're using slip, and slip is just a thinned out version of clay, a more liquid clay, we can only add it to our wet or leather hard piece. This process cannot be done after bisque. This slip will no longer stick to the bisque. It'll stick right away while the slip is wet, but then as it dries, it'll just flake off. So I do want to address the best way to clean your stencils so you can make sure that you're keeping them very flat and not bending that plastic so you can keep using them over and over again. I found that the best way to clean these off, especially the large ones, in this big bucket of water, you can see I can suction the stencil right to the side of the bucket. So it is following the curve of the bucket so the design is staying nice and flat. And then I just take a sponge and gently wipe off that slip. So once again, you want to take care of your stencils. They're not cheap and you want to be able to use them again and again and again. As you can see in there, it just suctions right to the side of the bucket. Wipe the front, flip it over, suction it to the bucket. I like to dry them in between paper towel if you don't have paper towel, you could lay them flat in between sheets of newspaper, but you wanna dry them nice and flat as well. This process works best if your clay is a soft leather hard. If your clay starts to get too dry, it's really hard for your clay to want to accept this slip that is a little more wet. I have found as well that if my clay is too dry when I start this process, as this starts to dry after I put my design on, I'm more likely to see some of the design wanna peel up or flake off. So do make sure that your clay form that you're applying your stencil colored slip design onto has enough moisture. And then you do want to um, cover your piece for at least 24 hours after you do this technique to allow that clay to dry slowly because this is a very, very thin piece of clay here. So it's gonna um, dry really fast. Okay, so the ones that I just did are not quite dry enough. And then I did some earlier here that you can see and as they dry, your newspaper is gonna start to crease and bend. And these ones are starting to get a little too dry so I would probably avoid using these. It really doesn't take long. It's about 15 minutes, so make sure you have your piece ready and everything set up 
when you make your designs because because this is such a thin amount of clay it's going to start to dry pretty fast i can't use this yet i want to let this sheen go away and i want to be able to touch this without slip transferring to my finger if there's still sheen present on this and the slip transfers to my finger when i touch it it's not quite ready because what will happen when i go to apply it it'll squish this design as many of you know in clay everything's all about timing and this process is one of those things where it can get to the point where it's a little too dry right now it's too wet but it's gonna get there and then we got to use these so if you leave your design too long it can turn bone dry which it's gonna be just very chalky and the clay is completely dry at this point don't try to transfer this onto your piece. It might stick like right away, but it's gonna flake off. So this design here seems like it might have enough moisture for us to still use it. So I'm gonna go ahead, just cut away some of this excess newspaper so I can start to get a little closer to my design. And this is one that I had done some Sharpie, the Sharpie circles on. I'm gonna cut those out. So the nice thing about this process is you can see I'm able to cut right through the slip. So you could cut any shape out that you wanted. You wouldn't have had to do a Sharpie design beforehand. You could just cut circles or cut triangles or lines, really whatever you wanted. Or you could just lay the whole design down especially if you had a flat surface, if you were doing a tile, this is a great way to get some background pattern on your tile. Find a place and I'm gonna lay it down and I'm just gonna press it on. And then I'm gonna take my sponge and just start to pull some moisture from the center out. And then I'm gonna apply pressure with my fingers because you can get trapped air between your design and your ceramic form. And then it'll be more inclined to wanna flake off. So you wanna make sure you either compress it with your finger or you could take a rib. Peel up one corner and just kind of see if it's attaching and it is. So because this clay was a little drier than I like to attach it, it did flatten out a bit more than I want it to, but it still looks nice. Stick this down. Like I said, this one's getting a little dry. Our other ones are probably about ready. So pulling a little moisture from the center out. You don't want to oversaturate it or you can get the slip too wet. That thin layer of slip really takes that water and it squishes a little bit more. So, you know, it just takes a, it's all about timing and when you're catching things. So the big part is just making sure you are adding that moisture so it can seal to your clay form and also that you are applying pressure. Because like I said, I have noticed that if you don't apply enough pressure, either with your finger or a rib, you can get little air bubbles and then it wants to flake off in that area. And then just peel one part up and see if it's transferred all the way. If you see a piece that doesn't seem like it's quite down, just take your finger and push it down. If your clay form seems to be getting a little dry, either spray it with water or you can take a sponge and rehydrate it because you do want to make sure your clay is wet enough to accept that slip design. If your design is still too wet, when you go to cut it with the scissors, you'll really notice because all the slip will start sticking to the scissors. So you do want to make sure that it sets up enough that that sheen goes away and that when you touch it, it doesn't transfer to your hand or to your finger. So I could cut this into just smaller the smaller circle shapes or I could do the whole strip of it. Because this one is a little bit softer, I won't need to add quite as much water. I'm just gonna blot it with water. 
apply some pressure with my fingers, maybe the rib. Being a little bit more gentle because this slip is a little bit softer, so it'll be easier for me to squish it more than I might want to. It might still be a little bit too wet. There's still quite a bit of a sheen. It's not transferring when I touch it, but the real test is when you go to cut it with the scissors, you should be able to get a nice clean cut through the design. So if you wanted to like cut triangles of this, or maybe you wanna cut this down the middle, if it was dry enough, which this one probably isn't quite, but we'll see, you'd be able to pass the scissors through it without getting any slip stuck to your scissors. So let's just test it. I think we're gonna get some stuck, but so it's not quite there yet. So it is important to let that sheen go away. Because that's a wider design where there's more slip, it's just gonna take a bit longer to stiffen up. But these, these ones that have these smaller, more intricate designs, they're gonna dry a lot quicker. So if you're doing this process where you make a bunch of different ones like we did, you might have some that are ready before others are, which is kind of nice because then you can get some going while you're waiting for the other ones to set up. See this one, because the design is more intricate, it did stiffen up faster. So I can cut with my scissors right through that slip and get a really nice clean cut. Yeah, so this one's perfect. It's ready, the sheen is gone away, the slip is not transferring to your finger when you touch it, but it's not too dry that we have to worry about it not wanting to adhere to this well enough. Okay, so I think this larger one is now ready for us. The sheen has gone away. So now you can see how much easier it is for me to pass the scissor through it and I'm not getting any slip transferring to my scissors. And then you can go ahead and cut closer to the design so it's easier for you to place it more accurately where you would like it. I'm starting to run out of room here. Because this design has more slip, I have to make sure I really compress it because there's a higher chance of some of that slip peeling away when I pull the newspaper away. So I'm making sure I really compress with my fingers. Like I said, you could also use a rib. The red rib works really well because the flexibility and softness is really helpful. And you may want to peel back and just take a look. If it's not completely transferred, just put it back down, add a little bit more moisture, add a little bit more pressure or compression. If it doesn't fully transfer, sometimes it looks cool. It has more of like an aged vintage look, which is appealing. If there's anywhere where the design is raising up, make sure you apply pressure and put it down. Attach it to your clay form because it will want to flake off. Hey, so this is it. We finished. Thank you for watching.